Welcome to episode 33 of Venture Ventures. Thank you for joining us. We are down one mouse folk fighter uh, that is sick. She is sick. That is Ashwin and her caretaker, Lex. Uh, hopefully Lex will feel better soon. But for now, we are soldiering on as you do when you want to keep playing D&D. &D. No flu will stop us. Um, last time on Venture Ventures, in search of a piece of the Rada of Law, which currently belonged to Iris, the Warforged Assassin, and uh, it also functioned as her heart, the, bed, the big bedfellows followed her to an abandoned underwater lab of Felix Tricknips. On their way, they met another traveler named Euphoria who was in search of Felix or one of his apprenti apprentices. I will never be able to say that word correctly on the first try. Uh, that, yeah, apprentice, there we go. Maybe it's Trump's fault. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. That might be able to help her find a new corporeal form for her deceased bugbear friend, Gurgle Noise, that was living in a ring. In the lab, the group found multiple maps of various regions of the continent some worn down golems and iris who was unconscious on the ground but still alive their prodi retrieved the third part of the rod of law ripping it out of her chest and <laughs> i'm editorializing it was he retrieved it gently and and uh sure uh, <laughs> uh Okay, um, yeah, third part of the Rodalon helped Euphoria place her friend Gurgle Noise inside the construct, constructed husk of Iris. The next morning, the gang, gang woke up to find that Euphoria, Gurgle Noise, and Orson, the warlock pig farmer, had gone or disappeared. And there was a large chest with a note from someone with the initials ST. The ever curious Ashwin opened the chest and found a stone that, when touched, when touched, triggered a trap that released an ass ton of angry apes that nearly defeated the three remaining party members. After that, uh, Prati received a message via sending from an old pal, Sarah Sierra, the former member of the Big Bedfellows, stating that uh, she had suggested to her boss, Baba Yaga, uh, that the Big Bedfellows may be good for a mission Baba had. Um, and the mission was uh, spelled out that Yaga got in an arg argument with her sentient iron teeth. They ran away or chattered away. And uh, she needed someone to find them. And so from there, the group decided to head back to Anista to check in with Venture Ventures. Uh, Sarah and Baba and hopefully get a lead on the whereabouts of their missing party member Orson and where we left off we were um, the group was about to board an arcane train that would significantly cut down the travel time back to the independent city of Anista aka the city of two aka the broken belt aka the eyes of inversus aka the eyes of Invir, aka the channel city aka the one with the shit ton of taverns aka the city of whatever the fuck and that's where we left off so you guys are just outside boulder hall um not in the city exactly you're you're uh, across the river and waiting at the train station for the train to arrive um, any minute now anything you guys would like to do <laughs> I have um, bad news uh, I had my I had the mic muted for you guys so I'm just gonna do a quick two minute recap of what we've done in the last 15 minutes uh, so the gang boarded the train it's very pretty it's got a semi-transparent top it looks brand new or recently remodeled blue and pearlescent white and uh they were the only ones boarding at the time they met the conductor wadsworth they entered the third car it's a five car train the engine and the second car are uh they tried to enter the second car and they couldn't it was guarded 
and what else am I missing, Dave? Uh, there's yeah, there's two there's two kind of guards uh, guarding the second car, yeah. so it's just a little little suspicious and crispy. Uh, kind of advocated ad, advocated to try to get to the first car because um, it was a little bit suspicious. Parati wasn't. He kind of thought it was just kind of a standard thing to have guards, but uh, but he was talked into trying to go talk to people, see if anyone's connected to any anything um, involving our future mission or any anything else, and then yeah. also try to just figure out a way to get around the guards. Yeah, actually, see, that didn't... figure out why this train is so nice. Yeah, uh, that the recap of that didn't take very long. Excellent. Um, I'm glad I caught that when I did. That's the second time I've done that in 33 episodes. Uh, so <laughs> it's a pretty good percentage. Yeah, uh, it could be better though, Dave. There's always room for improvement. Uh, so you guys are in the cabin, and do you want to head to the lounge car right away, or? Yeah, lounge car. Yeah, let's let's take a look around the lounge. Okay. So heading to the train's moving now yeah yeah it started and it's very smooth it's it's no different than the train you and ashwin took Prati. uh and um the fourth car which is the lounge car uh there is a bar in the center and there's various booths and uh small tables and couches places to lounge and it's all well appointed, beautifully carved wood uh, furniture, and uh, there is a clockwork golem behind the bar. And inside the lounge car, you see a few people. Um, you see a uh, a human uh, dressed in uh, black. His suit is imp impeccable, and uh, his tie is, is perfectly uh, matted flat. He's got a huge handlebar mustache. He's sitting uh, just as you enter to the right, and to the left there is two people. Uh, one is wearing a green, it's a half-elf wearing a green sundress, and uh, is is kind of looking sheepish, uh, for lack of a better term, as she talks to this drow who is not nicely dressed at all, kind of in very drab gray clothes that looks quite worn, and um, they're just quietly talking, and then. Further down the car on the other side of the bar is uh, a man dressed in military attire, and it is a lavender military attire, uh, and you recognize it as the uh, dress uniform of Crispy. You recognize it as Southern and Virian military. Go ahead and make a... Are you proficient in history? No. Okay. I'll let you make a history check anyways. 17. Okay. My plus zero. It, it's, it's a nice, uh, you know, f it's nice formal attire, but you've seen Southern Inverian military people in town in towns down south before, especially the ones who are not so happy about unification of the continent. And this one looks not like theirs. It has some of the hallmarks of an Inverian dress attire, but you think it's probably like an older version. And, um, yeah, uh, and then, so he's by himself at the bar and then on the uh, further down towards the end of the fourth car, there is a woman in a beautiful gold gown with fur around her neck. And uh, she is just sitting there 
fanning yourself and sipping on some sort of drink. Prati uh, just kind of whispers to uh, Crispy and Ashton. He's like, I want to go talk to the, the guy in the impeccable black suit. So he's um, right to your right. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you... let's uh, let's grab some drinks and then uh, why don't we why don't we split up and uh, see what we can find out here. I, I'm kind of curious about this gentleman at the bar myself. OK, so you go to the bar uh, to the clockwork golem and uh, it stare it sits there and just stare stares at you and says what drink can i make you i will have a ginger beer please he bends down and the clicking of his gears comes back up pops you uh, a ginger beer that's actually um in a bottle which maybe Prati's never seen it's pretty rare uh and hands it to you and uh says five silver all righty thank you you're welcome Bourbon sir. for me please one cube pours your drink and um before i start randomly uh Picking prices. Prices. Let me make sure I'm oh, not. I, think, I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. No. I think I could get it mostly right, but it's. I just want to. Um, it's all good. Not fuck up. Okay. Uh, we'll say it's five silver. Five silver. Sure. Okay. And says enjoy uh th thank you very much there's really no it's very robotic uh the interaction and mm -hmm. uh there is no um further interaction on the part of the golem the gentleman in the purple uh suit says oh bourbon man huh Yes, sir. That's right. What are you drinking today, sir? Ah, I'm more of a cognac person myself. Is, does this glass have uh, have anything in it? Yeah, it's there's a little bit uh, left at the bottom, and it's uh, the circular ice cube in his cognac uh, is melting rapidly, and he. Uh, says, well, we got a long journey. Y'all heading to, uh, to Nista? That's right, sir. Let me, uh, let me top you off there, and I give, I assume it's five more silver. Yeah. Uh, fill his drink as well. Clockwork fills in and goes, oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing more of each other in, over the next couple of days. Certainly. My name's Crispy. Well, you hit it nail on the head. We're heading down to the capital ourselves. Is that where you're going as well? Yeah, uh, got some meetings down there, and uh, my name's General Ratchet. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Looking down General. at Prady and Ashwin. Uh, and he leaves you to it unless you have any more questions. I just wanted to ask him where where you come where'd you get on the train where are you coming from. Oh, I, uh, I actually came on in Anista as well and uh, traveled up here, picked up a few people in, um, in uh, Revan's Run, Jesus Jake, and uh, yeah, we're kind of, uh, this, is, this is a partial business meeting, partial for pleasure. Uh, I know the, um, the, uh, woman behind me there, that's, uh, the Countess, the Countess. Hmm. Yeah, I know a couple of their type. Uh, can I, can I insight, uh, on where they've been? Were they actually in Revan's Run? 
Uh, you mean like you want to know if they actually went there or just it, I want to insight check him on on whether he's telling the truth. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Have at it. On, on what they've been up to, like going to Revan's Run and picking up a few people. Um. Fifteen. Uh yeah, you think he, it checks out? Just getting them. Okay. All right. Um. Well, General, it was a pleasure. I'll, I'll leave you to your drink. Like you said, we'll, we'll be seeing more of each other, I'm sure. Cheers. Thank you so much. And as you guys are leaving, the General, a tiefling in a black suit uh, with a stethoscope around her neck that is encrusted in diamonds as well, uh, walks into the car from the second car, the, the uh, sleeping quarters, and uh, she walks up to... The second car? I thought the second car was cargo. I mean the third car, yeah. sorry. Uh, gotcha. Uh, she walks up to the man in black with the mustache and starts up a conversation. Who would you like to talk to next? I'd like to go up to the two people talking, the black suit and the tiefling. Okay. You walk up to them, and uh, they hush themselves and uh, introduce themselves. The tiefling says, oh, hello. Did all of you jump on just now? I didn't see anyone at the platform, but uh, I thought it would have been a... A quick stop, but anyways, pleasure to meet you. I'm Dr. Uh, Madeline Kahn, and uh, this is, <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is uh, Herc Poirot, I believe he says his name. What? <laughs> and he says, Yes, that is my name, Doctor. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, quite a quite a fancy crew you got here. Uh, what are your names? I probably just goes, Caw, my name's Proddy. Well, nice to meet you, Proddy. Uh, haven't seen many Kenku in my days, but uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Crispy. Crispy, this, uh, Ashwin here. She's the she's the cute one. Yes, well, right. Darn toot, and she's cute as a button. Uh, Doctor Matt, uh, Doctor Madeline agrees, and they say, uh, Herc says, uh, yeah, so you're heading to uh, Anista, or you heading to Revan's Run? Where are you heading? We're heading to Anista. You ever been there before? It's a beautiful city, huge. Uh, is that the southern one or the northern one? Anista is the combination of the two. Uh, Inis, oh, okay. Inis, yes, I've been to Anista. Yeah. Inis is the northern and Ista. It's just like a combination of... Um, mm -hmm. uh, and he says, well, yeah, uh, I love it there. It's uh, There's no shortage of interesting people and things going on and is a bit dirty for my taste. And, uh, yeah, as you're closer to him, his suit is insanely symmetrical and not a wrinkle to be seen. It must have gallons of starch in it. Um, hmm. And, uh... uh Prady just says, uh, so, uh, what line of work you you two in? Uh, I'm, a I'm Dr. Madeline, I'm sure, will uh, tell you if you haven't noticed by your stethoscope, but uh, I am an uh, investigator, private investigator. Uh, go where I'm needed. We know that. Are you, are you needed somewhere? Yeah, I mean, I like to go. Uh, I have a offices around in Veer, and I like to go to check in on them every once in a while and quite likely I have found when you go to a big city uh, someone's bound to need you so uh, it's not going to hurt to uh, show up and Dr. Madeline says yes I am I am a doctor and 
uh, I was was tending to someone in uh, in uh, Nixon's rest, and so now I'm heading back to uh, Anista, and I have met quite wonderful people on this train. I do hope you don't stay in your room during our journey. We all of us won't bite, at least the people I've met. And, uh, yeah. Y'all seem pretty well acquainted. Are, are you all just meeting each other here now on this train for the first time? Uh, some of us, uh, f speaking for myself, yes, that's true. Uh, but um, some, of, some of the people here know each other. I think the general and the countess know each other. And yeah, he, he did mention that, yeah. And obviously, um, Miss Emerald and her, her uh, attendant, I'm blanking on her name, and uh, Herc says, I, I believe her name was Mary Quint. And uh, Dr. Matlin says, yes, uh, that's it. Uh, hopefully didn't hear me. They seem to be quite enamored in whatever conversation they're having. Uh, yeah, you'd have and that to... Would be, that would be those two right over there? Yeah, about... The, the elf and the sundress and the drow? Yeah, the half-elf and the drow. Um, okay. Herc po uh, Poirot is human, and uh, Dr. Madeline Connick said this is tiefling, and the general is a human, and so is the countess. Thank the you. countess is in the gold gown. Yeah, at the far end. Uh... Cool. Right, Prady just kind of he starts telepathically talking to Crispy. He's like, "This guy makes me really calm, and I like his suit. I think uh, mm -hmm. he might be in." You know, he might be involved in some sort of current investigation, but I'm not going to press him about it right now. He does look more pressed than you usually do, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Mr. Poirot, I, I, I have to ask, where do you hail from? Just out of curiosity. Oh, I'm from uh, Moot Break in Southern Inver. That's where I grew up. Uh, and from where you grew up, Brian, that is... Mm -hmm. About mid portion of the southern arm of Inver, and yep. it is um, like the northern part of the southern arm. So okay. it's on the bay, and right. um, yeah, it's just a very it was it's a major fortress was a major fortress for uh, southern Inver. Gotcha, um, and just being conversational, I turned to the doctor and, and and good doctor what about you i'm just curious uh i was fascinated to find out where people are from uh yeah i'm from uh ista actually so uh that's where i grew oh. up and uh city folk thrown through then huh yeah i did uh go to school though uh on this actually i am a member of the seated circle that's where i got my medicine training and the seated circle is what the two people you've seen now who claim to be, or when you were with Felix, the large humanoid that was behind him and didn't speak. Felix said he was a member of uh, the seated circle, uh, which is essentially, he had the, like, crazy markings and then the the leader in felix uh also was a member gotcha well i uh must be uh retiring for a nap as i've been doing on this journey i'm i quite like naps uh Although my mother did say that I shouldn't take too many naps because I'll be taking a long nap, like all of us will at some point. Hopefully not too soon, am I right? Anyway. Yeah, you sleep when you're dead, that's what I was told. Yep. So I'll leave you to it. It was a pleasure meeting all of you. And uh, she 
leaves the the fourth car, heads to the sleeping car, the third car, and leaves you with Herc. Um, Prati just goes, hey, uh, do you have any idea? Is it standard procedure for the second car that leads to the engine? Is that usually guarded? Uh, well, I, I just assumed it's not usually got usually it's they keep a guard there because luggage and such is kept there uh, and whatever else is being transported just so there's no thieving going on but uh having an extra guard i assume there's just something maybe somebody hired an extra guard to be put there or uh yeah i can't it, it doesn't strike me as as too weird are you looking for uh, looking for something valuable? No, we're just we wanted to go to the uh, the engine room because Crispy's never been on a train before. Yeah, oh. this is my first, and it's quite a specimen. I mean, this looks gorgeous. Well, uh, talk to Conductor Wadsworth. I'm sure when we stop in Revan's Run, uh, that's a bit longer of a stop. Uh, maybe ten minutes. He'll take you around it and allow you to see the engine room and meet yeah. the engineer and yeah maybe i'll just do that he did offer but he seemed a little bit rushed uh before we left the last station so i just wanted to get out of his way a little bit he seems uh, a little uppity yeah he... little, not, not uppity just he seems like he needs to stay on schedule a little bit so yeah. i just wanted to let him do that that's exactly uh he gets a little ornery if uh he's he, he's not on time or anywhere near it if he's not early, he's late, uh, as far as he said, but I don't really know what that means because <laughs> you can't really... He takes a sip. Anyways, I do believe this drink is finally hitting me. Uh, is there anything else I can help you gentlemen with? Not at all, sir. Enjoy your day. Thank we'll, you. We'll be seeing you. And as you guys leave, he pulls out a notebook and starts writing in it. As we're walking away, I try to, like, side-eye over. Do I see what he's writing at all? <laughs> you know this DC is going to be insane, right? Yeah. Okay. I do. Go ahead. There's, Perception. There's, I do. I have a good modifier on this character. Maybe there's a chance. 21? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Sounds good. The mix of you not wanting to be <clears throat> conspicuous and his handwriting makes it a difficult check so uh i'm, a, I'm gonna stroll over to the the caboose i'm kind of curious what it looks like back there probably do you want to maybe chat up this uh this miss uh emerald and her attendant and see what their deal is sure i'm just starting to get a i don't know it's a weird group of people maybe this is just how trains are i don't really know Seems like an odd group. That's all. But I'll be right back. I just want to. Nah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it couldn't be any weirder than a Kenku and a mouse folk and a monk. We did just add a serious <laughs> level of weirdness to this train. So you had, uh, we'll uh, handle Crispy in the caboose first, and then we'll get back to Ashwin and Prati. Uh, you head to the caboose, Crispy. And it is furnished similarly. The furniture is different, however. There is, instead of a bunch of separate tables and booths and couches and such, this caboose is furnished with one large table that is being set currently. Uh, it's a very long table, and there's a bunch of chairs in it, 15 chairs. And uh, in the corners, there's banquettes and uh, and, and small tables for uh, where a server is currently gathering silverware and setting the table. Um, yeah. Is there a door out to the back? There's a door out to the back. As you enter the caboose, uh, to your left in one of the banquettes is uh, you hear some clanking as you enter the room. 
and to your left immediately is a very large dragonborn, red dragonborn, uh, who greets you uh, quite loudly and says, Ho there! Hello! And he's You're, uh, quite a stout fellow. He's sitting down, and he's still huge, and he's wearing a bunch of of beautifully shined armor um and on his armor it looks like dress you've seen dress armor for paladins before uh and this seems to be that and on his armor there is a symbol on it uh that you think is a symbol of inversus which is a god um and he says uh Oh, bless you, uh, my son. Uh, I am Arbiter Christi, Paladin of Inversus. Uh, you heading to Anista or Revan's Run? or? Uh, we're going all the way to the end of the line, which is uh, Anista, as I understand it. Yes, it is. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I assume we'll be talking more because all of us dine in here at this one long table. It is quite an... I've never been on a train... That, you uh, too. This is my first time. I've been on a train. Uh, pardon me. Oh. Uh, uh, Not possible. Pardon me. Uh, but just having one large table, kind of a communal experience, uh, especially such a nice train such as this. It, it's a, uh, it's been a good experience so far. I'm looking forward to it. This looks like quite a spread that they're setting up here. Uh, make a. Are you proficient in religion? Nope. Okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, and he's um, currently uh, sipping on a flask while you talk to him as you're conversing just that little bit. Anything you want else you want to say to him? Um, I'm just going to excuse myself. I'm just, I want to take out a look in the back. Like I said, this is my first train ride. I, I'm just fascinated by this entire experience. Uh, I just got to say, your your armor is spectacular. Uh, it's just, it is a gorgeous piece, really, truly. Bless you. Uh, it is uh, a lot of elbow grease goes into keeping this thing pristine. I like to wear it as often as possible in spite of how uncomfortable it is. Uh, hopefully... It will inspire anyone I meet to to join the Church of Inverses. Well, I hope it definitely works for as I take my hat off and just kind of flap it against my chest and dust puffs off of it. Oh, my. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little, little trail dust. I had no keeping me clean. I just can't, can't yeah, help they, it. They have a beautiful shower uh, bath set up in the sleeping car. Uh hmm. I'll have to look at that. I mean, I, I'm still, I'm still dipping my toes in the, in the, sure, just the amenities of this place. It's just out of this world. I'm definitely not used to it. Breath of fresh air, I think, would do me. Yeah, do me take a look. Right. It was, a, it was a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. And I head out back. And you head out back. Uh, the servers don't say anything. They're, they just kind of nod at your presence, but don't. They stay busy don't want to bother you and you head to the door and there is a little platform on the back and you can see the single rail trailing out from behind the train as it's moving along and uh yeah what would you like to do um one thing that i do as i'm walking out the door the top half of the train you said transparent right? semi-transparent yeah semi-transparent so if so i like while well, standing in the doorway i like look at my hand on both sides is it like the same transparency in both directions yeah uh it is in that portion but there are as you're walking in various cars it is more and less transparent at various parts does that okay. make sense so um it does. okay yeah uh, but yes, right. from from right to left, as you're facing backwards out the car, it is the same transparency. Uh, okay. Yeah. The other thing I'm looking for uh, when I'm out back there, just comparing it to my metagame real knowledge of trains, uh, fake knowledge of trains. I know nothing about trains. Um, but is there like one of those like ladders up to the top of there the train is. in the back? Yep. All right. All right. Snake a note. Okay. Yep. I, I stay out there for a few minutes, enjoying the fresh air, and then I'll make my way back. Okay. That's all I want to look at. We will hop over to Prodi 
and Ashwin, as you approach uh, the half elf and drow, uh, the drow in the drab gray clothing uh, is the first person to talk to you, Prati, and she says, Hello, uh, how may I help you? Oh, I'm just being social. Um, this is uh, my friend Ashwin. My name is Prati. And uh, I'm, we just uh, wanted to meet you guys. Uh, we're going to be on the same train for a couple days, so we just figured we'd get to know everybody. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I am Mary Quint. And, uh, and uh, she looks over to the half-elf in the green dress who looks very shy. And she's just kind of staring at her, and uh, half elf in the green dress dress finally gets kind of the hint and says, "Oh, I am I am uh, Miss Miss Emerald. It's nice to meet you, Prady. Was it? Oh. Yeah, Ka Prady. Um, I uh, I can appreciate you know someone being a little introverted like yourself." Uh, would you like me to uh, speak to you telepathically? Uh, it, it, if you want to, I'm I'm sorry I, I was so shy to begin with. Uh, and Mary Quint interrupts her and says, "Yeah, it's really you should probably ask for consent before you do something that like you did, but do that with me as well before you uh, do that." Uh, but we, we were kind of having a conversation, Prady. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry uh, to be so gruff. No problem. Well, I hope I get to know you guys better I'm some sure, other time. I'm sure we'll see you at dinner. There's kind of a weird table situation going on in the caboose. All right, Mary. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you head off as... Uh, Crispy heads back into the lounge car, uh, and uh, dinner's about to be served. Uh, what would you would you anything you want to do before you um, go to dinner, or what would you like? Um, how much time do we got? Five minutes. Okay. No, I'm good. Okay. So one I'm of good. the uh, attendance. One of the Mater D's comes and announces dinner. Dinner is served. If you'll please join us in the dining car. And uh, everyone joins. Uh, Arbiter Christie is already there. Dr. Madeline comes uh, last to the table. Uh, General Ratchet, Countess Clue, Mary Quint, Miss Emerald Herc Poirot and um, <laughs> uh, they all sit down and the first thing you are served uh, the Mater D says uh, first we will start off with our normal uh, drink to kind of bed the stomach uh, Tonight's special is Lactil Voltarian, and it was made uh, with a dragon's stomach worth of candied snails. Uh, we burned them, and then uh, we buried them under a campfire, uh, after which uh, 27 days passed, and we added a quarter of its volume uh, of sour stones sear we seared it and uh froze it again and then we uh brought it on the car and now we blended it uh, with juice and and uh yes please drink it while it is still chunky and did they say they buried it with a, in a campfire underneath a campfire yeah why would that make it taste better uh who who do we end up sitting next to so uh, you can sit uh, wherever you like. Um, uh, the let's see, G 
General Ratchet and Countess Clue sit next to each other. Mary Quint and Miss Emerald sit next to each other. There's plenty of seats. Um, I'd like to sit next to Arbiter Christie if I could. Yep. And uh, Ashwin. Ashwin, Ashwin sits down next to uh, Emerald and uh, Mary. Okay. And where do you want to sit, Prati? I'll go sit with the uh, the Countess and the the uh, General Herc Herc. Oh, sorry, sorry, the General. Yeah. Yeah, Herc uh, is sitting uh, by him, not by himself, but like at at uh, a, a chair away from you. Okay, Crispy. I'll go sit with I'll go sit with Herc then. Okay, yeah. so you're going to be on the other side of Crispy. And okay. And um, after that whole spiel, I lean over to the arbiter and I'm just like, "Is he for real? Do people actually do that for a beverage?" Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I haven't had anything I didn't like so far. So, uh, all right, I'll give it a shot. I just I'm starting to understand why the uh, ticket prices are so high for this train. That seems like a lot of work for a drink. Yeah. But, I'm open for new experiences. Let's see what it does. Uh, yeah, it's it's a goblet, a pretty tall goblet, and as you drink it, um, you can tell me if it's any good. It's a little bit like um, a uh, it's a very sour um, shake that tastes like beef jerky and. Uh, and uh, Sour Patch Kids. Mm. Goes down like chunky mud. And as you turn to look at the Arbiter, who's, you know, sitting down, he's looking down at you. Uh, mm -hmm. he, you turn to him, and his, his snout, his dragon My snout, is, all dragged <laughs> is he's just pounding it, and uh, it's kind of coming out of the side of his mouth, which he, after he's done drinking it, he... he dabs it with a napkin uh most everyone is drinking it uh the uh miss you see Mar you see mary quint kind of pushing the drink towards miss emerald and uh the only person who's not drinking it is uh countess clue so is this an alcoholic beverage at all no it's just like, okay. as the Mater D said, it's just meant to bait, like seed the stomach sure. or whatever. Okay. Um, and then the next course, uh, the another Mater D, uh, Mater D two, we'll call him, brings in a small pony keg that is hinged, cut in half and hinged uh, on a cart, and flips half the hinge portion over and you see a bunch of hooves inside of it uh and he says the mater d1 says uh the first course is a uh barrel full of goat hooves that we seared and boiled the abyss out of it and uh this was all the previous year and after a quarter of last autumn, we mixed it with a hearty serving of bacon grease uh, and some of the ash that we used to sear it and zested with some bone dust of a rock. See, on this one, they, they didn't have me, and then they said bacon grease, and I was on board again, and then they threw me right off the rag and can. Arbiter, is it, every meal is like this, you said, right? Oh, yeah. D yep. The soup is usually my oh. favorite. This is the soup portion. This is soup. What does the rock dust do for... Like, what is its purpose in this? Who are you asking? Asking the Mater D. Oh, uh, the Mater D says, uh, so it's just a garnish of sorts. It's uh, very hard to come by. Uh as I'm sure you know, a rock is a gargantuan bird. I've heard they can have wing, wing, wing spans of up to 300 feet wide. Oh, that kind of rock. Got it. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, sorry. 
uh, you are you are my humblest apologies you are correct to get confused about that I should have been more specific well I'll think I'll pass on this course I can't uh, really bring myself to drink another bird <laughs> oh yes of course sir uh, is there anything else we might be able to uh, bring you um, I believe we have some of last night's soup track tic tac what's in that uh it's mostly hot peppers uh that were boiled in a pressure vessel and uh after uh three hours we mix it as well with bacon grease and um it's very spicy wow that sounds great I'll have that. It sounds way better than the first option. I mean, sorry, they both sound lovely, but uh, of course, sir. Snaps and one of the major one of the servers heads into the uh, into the back towards the front of the car, to the front. Um, yeah, and so everyone is eating the soup and uh, just making small talk. Um, you hear Countess Clue saying to General Ratchet, um, <sighs> General, I don't, like, want any of this, and I know it's rude, but I don't want to freaking eat this, okay? Like, just stop. And uh, General says, okay, okay, I just I want you to uh, get your nutrients. How old is the Countess? How old does she look? Like early 20s. Okay. And... I, say, I mean, Countess, if you don't mind me saying, it seems like they're more than accommodating here if, if there, there's something else that they can get you. The General's right. You, you gotta eat something. I just... I usually just... You know, if something looks good, I will eat it, but... Usually I just have some nuts that I keep in my room and I eat that and that's all I like and I don't know why that's a problem, she says, uh, motioning to the general. And uh, her, uh, you notice that the feathers that are in her hair are not just like peacock feather beautiful, um, they're smaller than that, but they are changing hues uh, very slowly uh, as you look at it. Um, if any of you are proficient in religion or nature. I don't know about Ashwin, but I am not. Let me check. I am also not. I feel like Ashwin might have a nature under her belt. She's a mouse. <laughs> nope, she doesn't. Oh, bummer. <laughs> uh, you guys need a bard in the party uh, <laughs> a bard or a rogue yep uh, so um, yeah she she uh, just kind of sits there and is just like eh, and then she you know tries to make small talk with Dr. Madlin about her diamond encrusted stethoscope and where she got it made and such I do actually get the Countess's attention one more time, because I want to know where she's from as well, and where she's the Countess of. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I am uh, I am uh, a Countess. That's just, like, my given name. They used to, in, in Revan's Run, they used to give out titles to, like, my family, and um, I just kind of like it better than my real first name. Uh, so I'm just going by Countess. It's accurate, but it just doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. No, I understand. So you're an affluent family then, the clues of Revan's run. Yes. yes. Uh, well, you, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. I was, I was just curious. Uh, everyone seems so fascinating here. You, those feathers in your hair are just gorgeous. Can't imagine where you came across something like that, and I just I had to know. Oh yeah, um, I think one of my suitors gave it to me. He said it was like 
I don't know if I, he was kind of a, a bullshitter. And when she says bullshitter, uh, the general goes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and she said, well, he was kind of, he was just f- full of it sometimes. And like, he said it was a coaddle feather, feathers, which, you know, a coaddle, it's like, you know, a celestial being he's he Mm. was a wimp like he got a paper cut once and i had to console him for like 15 minutes and he was saying he went and fetched these himself or did you just buy him for you well he wasn't i don't remember he wasn't i don't think he was like i'm sure he just bought them but like he's full of it i didn't marry him Uh, understood didn't mean to press didn't mean to bring up a Oh no, it's fine. I enjoy uh, I enjoy talking to new people. We've been with these people for a couple days now, and so, you know, they're they're cool and stuff. But uh... certainly, certainly, everyone seems so nice here. And I just turned back to the arbiter and small talk with him. Uh, Parati, um. At this point, um, uh, Herc Poirot, I keep wanting to say it correctly, but it's not in this world. Uh, Herc says to you, Prati, he says, so, uh, how did you, I've met a few Kenku, but I, I, I've never met one quite like you if you catch my meaning. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not like other Kenku in that I've well traveled and I've gotten out of, you know, where I grew up, which was Doomerville, which is a big, uh, <clears throat> has a big Kenku population there, but, uh, is that you know, a- I just, I'm just, I was part of a mercenary group for a while and just was really really well traveled for a long time during the war and uh and then i just went into adventuring i just you know i i went into adventuring for myself uh and i hope to return to doomerville at some point but yeah right now i'm kind of dedicated to the mission it's at that point that um arbiter christy gets up and Herc has to kind of move his chair forward because Arbiter Christie is a big dragonborn and uh, uh, excuses himself to use the restroom. Uh, Herc, after he's done readjusting himself, says, Is Doomerville, that's up uh, in the Roast territories? Yeah, it's a coastal city in the north. Yeah, so. it's cold, cold there, right? Yeah, you get you get used to it. It's not not terribly cold, but yeah. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I've never been up there. I've I've been a lot of places. I've I've been to Grimm's Rest, uh, and I've been to Vera Mall and uh, a few places, but uh, never been to uh, the Rose Territories. Yeah, we just came from the Vera Vera Mall. And. Uh, uh, he uh, says to Ashwin, where might you be? And they proceed to have a con- conversation. Ashwin says, uh, I'm I'm from a small village in Nivermorn Forest. Uh, yeah, I'm just adventuring always called to me. So, And that goes on and on. And your next course is called uh, Voiced Yell. As the Mater D brings it in, it's uh, put in what looks like a metal, uh, a, a uh, oh my goodness, uh, like a just a, a basin meant to be meant to look like an actual stomach of some large creature, uh, and it is the Mater D says uh, this is uh, pork loins uh, with a mix of. Uh, brine straight out of the bay of Envir, um and uh we cooked it boiled it 
specifically boiled it. After 24 hours, we mixed the ashes of a long dead society in with it and cut it into equally sized pieces, one for each of you. And then uh, we stirred in the cook's favorite beverage, which tonight, and he pauses, is orange juice. Like, like from the fruit? Yes, sir. Please right. enjoy. And you get served pork loin, and it's just as uh, not appetizing as uh, you think. Maybe you'd like that. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds pretty good to me. Okay. <laughs> Orange and pork goes great. And uh, as you guys are about halfway through that, that pork loin, uh, you hear someone scream, and everyone... Freeze stops what they're doing, and uh, Herc gets up, and a few other people get up and make their way to the sleeping car. And um, as you, as he approaches the the entryway to the sleeping car, uh, there is Arbiter on the ground, and he checks his vitals, and Herc says. He's dead. He looks around. Someone stabbed this man. And the arbiter? The arbiter's dead? The arbiter's dead. Whoa. As, as you guys approach Whoa. from the back uh, as well. Um, and Herc says, We were all in the dining car. And he points behind you guys because the Mater D is 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 following up behind. And Herc says, "Find the conductor. I would like to have a word with him, as I'm sure he'd like to know that someone was stabbed and killed on his train. Not just someone, a big guy wearing yes. full armor too. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, that's a." Uh versus on his armor correct anyone bit better well versed anyone confirm that for me yes uh, I, I i do think it is i am uh is that a language a written language it's a god and versus is a god uh oh. he's a paladin so would, of inversus. Make, a, make him a fully armed paladin dragonborn mm -hmm. taller and bigger than me mm -hmm. yeah we should all get back to the dining car i think we should all uh I'll talk about this. Maybe uh, not right here. I think that is a fine idea because we don't know what else might happen. So uh, let's all head back there. You guys head back to the dining car and Doing a quick check. Did everyone come with? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, everyone is just back. kind of talking and um, uh, you know, just worried about the situation. And when we were in the sleeping car, were the guards still on the other end of the car, I imagine? Uh, they're not there. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, so Herc wants to talk to the conductor, obviously, because he noticed that, too. Um, you guys head back to the, to the dining car, and the conductor joins you and is quite flustered, and he says... I don't know what happened, but we're storing the body in the storage car, and uh, I will be firing those two uh, guards for being off duty. They were drinking in the back. So, uh, for now, I think it best that all of us stay together. And uh, we either retire to the sleeping car where uh, we will have 24-7 uh, guards, not the two guards who were not on, who left their post. Uh, they're currently in lockup. Uh, 
but we have some off shift guards that are going to come on uh, who I just woke up and they were pretty annoyed with me uh, for waking them up. Uh, and uh, yeah, so what would you, what would everyone like to do? He says to the group. Didn't I notice uh, that the countess went back to her? Didn't she go back like before the scream? Did she go back to her room? She, um, no, I don't think so. I don't think okay. So. Was it the uh, the arbiter did? Okay, I thought I I thought I remember the countess doing that. Never mind. If I said that. No, she said she likes eating the nuts in her room and just those. Yes. Oh, okay. Got but it. But I don't think she actually went there. Got it. Um, so, so who wasn't here? The guards? Well, the guards and Wadsworth. I believe someone mentioned there's an engineer driving the train. So someone's got to be up there, yeah? Yeah. Some other service staff. The uh, engineer was... I was up with the engineer... And so, uh, yeah. And Herc says, I would like to talk to you alone if I could, Conductor Wadsworth. And he takes Wadsworth kind of on the other side of the uh, the door. There's like a, a cutout glass in the door to the dining car, but he takes him into the other side of the door in the lounge car, and you see them talking for a while. Um and uh, after about 10 minutes, Herc uh, stays in the lounge car. Conductor um, comes in and stays there. And Herc uh, says, uh, I would like to talk to uh, each of you just real quick. Those of you who are with me, this will be not more than 30 seconds of your time. But I just want to get a a conver have a conversation with all of you. And he starts starts with uh, the various people who are in the room, and they come back, like he said, very quickly. And he gets to you guys, and he says, uh, "Have you noticed?" He's talking to you, Crispy, first, just one on one. Have you noticed anything odd uh, lately in the car? You, I know you haven't been in here. In, on this train for very long, but I mean anything odd. I, I noticed all kinds of odd things. We have a doctor with a diamond encrusted stethoscope. Now I've never seen a doctor who can afford a diamond encrusted stethoscope. That seems crazy. We got a general here. I'm I'm from Southern and Veer. I I'm not a military man, but that uniform is out of place. It's not. Why do you say that? Is. It looks like it's outdated or old. It might be missing parts. It's just missing pieces, missing badges. I'm not quite sure. I can't quite place it because I don't know what all of it means. But that looks like it's from generations ago, not not current. And a general? I mean, I feel like a general would be more up to date, I guess, and probably not sent to fetch a 20-year-old brat. Then we got a 20-year-old brat. Well, that's <laughs> not very weird, I guess. She's just a 20-year-old brat who has a lot, way too much money and attention, it seems. Probably the most normal person in the bunch. And then, of I don't course, think... Uh, well, you're talking by yourself, never yeah. mind. Um, and he says... Uh, and I just start, I'm, I'm just going off. I'm yeah, like, sure. yeah, these people are freaking weird. What are you, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> and uh, Herc is uh, very interested in the general stuff and then just kind of... Um, less interested in the other stuff and he's like well it's interesting what you said but you know the general was in there with us so i don't understand oh, definitely I, I don't think it was him i'm just not to mention i mean generals being generals but that arbiter christie looked like he could mop the floor with all of us without trying too hard at least that's what it looked like to me I mean, he's twice my size i'm pretty sure um and again, he's walking around in full plate. Who stabs a dragon in full plate? Dragonborn in full plate. I mean, yes. Uh, General doesn't strike me as the type. Not, none of, nobody on this train strikes me as the type, to be honest. Right. Well, I guess 
we will maybe the bartender i don't know <laughs> the clockwork the clockwork uh it's it's possible unless he's malfunctioned but uh he looks back and you can see over his shoulder the clockwork bartender is just sitting there not moving which he's that's how he's unless he's making a drink or whatever he's not mm -hmm. he's basically right motionless uh, and so, oh, and I, I should let you know that we do have in our room, his name's Frank Ronda something, I can't remember. Uh, there is a flesh golem. You don't have to worry about him. He uh, can't hold a knife, so there's that. Uh, he's pretty inert. He's, he should be just standing uh, in the suite. Just want to give you a heads up. Thank you for telling me. I appreciate your honesty. Uh, I have heard of golems, golems going crazy, so that is a possibility. Uh if you don't I've mind. I've seen that thing uh, do some damage. If it went crazy in this train, we'd be seeing walls knocked down, not so much persists and precision knife strikes on a on a dragonborn pallet, and I don't think. That's a fair but point. certainly, I, I don't know much about golems, golems so uh, I'm, I'm, he, he just seems to listen to what I say. That's a fair point. <laughs> uh, so you finish your conversation, Prodi comes in. And uh, have you noticed anything? We were obviously eating dinner, so it's not me or you. Have you noticed anything odd going on in your short time here with us on the train? Yeah, I mean, it seems to be a interesting cast of characters. Uh, there's obviously something going on in that second car. The I'll, you know, we're not really too sure why there needs to be guards guarding the second car. It doesn't seem too standard. Um, yeah, there's, there's definitely something, something going on that I'm not aware of, but it did strike me as somewhat odd that, um, that you have a general and a countess and then you have two guards and, uh, you know, it seems like this, this train is way fancier than we expected. Yes. I mean, it's just a bunch of weird, small things going going on but i can't seem to put them together to make any of it make sense i appreciate you having this talk with me uh if you wouldn't mind and he offers the caboose to you so to speak uh, did you, have you guys looked at the murder weapon is it is, we, it's, is there have, anything peculiar about it we is, have are not, you sure the cause of death is being stabbed i mean i am not a medical doctor or a uh, person who's capable of identifying that. I'm sure our Dr. Madeline Kahn can identify more accurately what is going on. Uh, but I will be talking to her next. And uh, yes, I will probably take her to the body and have her look at it. Uh, but I thank you for your time, Prati. And... Uh, okay. So uh, he does as he says and talks to Dr. Khan and they go look at the body and she comes back to the car and uh, he enters the caboose and you guys are in the room and the mater, the servers and mater D are just uh, kind of s scared, don't know what's going on. Um, and uh, people are talking. If there's anyone you want to talk to, let me know. Otherwise... Do I know uh, what Inversus is the god of? Um, what 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 their domain is? A you can make a religion or history check, intelligence check. It'd be the same. Fifteen. Yes. Fifteen. Yeah. Um, Inversus is a neutral lawful deity. Uh, generally um just meant to hold on there we go uh is uh known as the devil's advocate uh and kind of god of the unheard uh mm -hmm. is is the god of balance and minorities the unheard and the forgotten And, um, yeah, it gets to nighttime, and everyone heads to the sleeping car at the same time, and, yeah. The one thing I'd see if I could ferret out while we were all chatting 
is I want to see if I can get uh, Mary Quint and or uh, Miss Emerald to tell me where they're where they're coming from as well, or where they're from. Uh, Mostly, I'm, I'm curious if they're also from Southern and Veer. Okay. Um, yeah, you talk to them, and you get the same thing as Prady in terms of okay. Miss Emerald being shy and Mary Quint being uh, an asshole. And uh, when you ask where they're from, Mary Quint gives you a snarky answer, and Miss Emerald says, we're... we're, we're we're from uh, the outskirts of of uh, the Nivermorn Forest. Um, yeah, and Mary Quint says, uh, but uh, we usually don't like to share that with people. So, um, you know, if you don't mind, we're just gonna keep to ourselves for a second. Cer certainly. Yeah, Slow super awkward. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, you guys are, nighttime comes soon after mm -hmm. that, and people are retired early to their sleeping cars, and each of you are led to the bathroom, um, you know, in order. And um, one sec. Uh yeah, and Ashwin's take, uh, excuse me, Ashwin is, it's her turn to use the restroom before, uh, it's like a communal restroom, uh, but it's nice, so um, it's not too, too bad. Um, and each of you are, let me roll something real quick. And, okay. Uh, Anything you guys would like to do uh, before you head to the bathroom, or and yeah, I'd like to climb up. I want to climb up on top of the train and head to the first car. So you want to go out the window? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the window is locked. So how do you want to? Do you want to unlock it? Do you have lock picking tools or anything like that? Uh, I can get that for you, uh, Prouty. Is it, you having trouble with that latch there? Yeah. You got any any tools? I could use, or you got something? Pull in my bag, I sure do, and I take out my thieves' tools. Cool. Have at it. That'd be a 23. Yep. It unlocks and slides up. After right. you, good sir. All right, I climb up on top of the the uh, number three car. Okay, and as you're exiting the window, um, Herc knocks on the door and says, uh next for the bathroom uh i got a party uh yeah that's me okay um, make yeah. my way that way yep and don't let him don't let him see through the door <laughs> yeah uh Prady, <laughs> as you're like sneaking squeezing out the door to the hallway Prady is pulling himself up make an athletics check to climb the side of the train if you fail this you're going to be left on the side <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. And Prady knows it. Uh, yeah, I don't have any advantage or anything on athletics. Ashwin gives you a boost. Eight. <laughs> Underneath your foot. Eight? <laughs> yeah. You are struggling uh, to climb to the top, and you are very worried you might fall if something doesn't change quickly. So uh, I will say that you are hanging on the side of the train right now and shaking and uh maybe it's the fact that you're moving quite quickly maybe it's the fact that you're pretty high up uh what do you want to do you want to keep trying or do you want to head back into the car ashwin starts pulling a rope out of her bag okay looping, <laughs> it, looping it around ready to like chuck it out the window after him okay um i'm just looking through stuff i could do uh not, haste wouldn't help me, right? I can't see why. Yeah, it would just give come me on. more action. What do you want to do? Come yes. on, come on, come on. I, uh, I just, uh, can I make it as, as an you option? You make just... another athletics check, but if you get not above average, it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I, I get. 
Yeah, I just I just decided to go back in the window. Okay. You head back in the window and you're freaked the fuck out. Uh, oh, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Whew. I thought I could climb better than that, but it's pretty slippery out there. Prodi, you could have died if uh, yeah, I saw you struggling and then I started getting my rope out and I don't know what I would have done with it, but because if you would have, if I had a, you know, like lassoed you or what a crispy, I'm not a cowboy, if I would have done that, it, it, you would have fallen, I would have just dragged you along and possibly gotten pulled out with you. Uh, well, it's okay, I'm back in, so. <sighs> and um, it's at this point. Um, We'll switch back to Crispy. Crispy, Herc leads you to the bathroom and says, uh, I will be in the corner here about 10 feet away. Uh, I don't want to hear your business in there, but just to make sure you're all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I appreciate it. I take care of myself just fine, but sure, times like these might be best. Uh, he's not in the bathroom with you. He's just like outside the bathroom. Gotcha. It, He's in, not a bathroom attendant. No. Uh, nobody's <laughs> in the bathroom. It's a smaller bathroom, but it's nicely appointed. Um, I assume you use the toilet what, and do all that stuff? Yep. And I, and I take a shower or whatever they have. I, I clean myself. When you uh, use the restroom and, and uh, the toilet, um, you pull the lid open and you see a shrunken desiccated orc's head and then everything goes black and uh what you hear is a uh herc kind of banging on something proddy and ashwin not like super violently uh but uh crispy uh next thing you see is you're in a seemingly en endless white room and uh, ahead of you about 40 feet is a a short stout man uh, only wearing like a breech cloth but it's covered in blood and he seems to be bleeding he's got all kinds of cuts gashes burns and wounds on his body and he's approaching you slowly, but he's smiling, and he looks welcoming, kind of the opposite of um, of the drow, Mary Quint. Um, it might be, like, the most, like, comforting face you've ever seen. Uh, and uh, despite all of his wounds, burns and gashes and such, he's not screaming in pain. Uh, it does look like he's in pain. Uh, as he moves, he kind of grimaces very slightly. And he says to you when he gets within, like, 15 feet, he says, Crispin, you did not deserve this. I'm sorry it has fallen upon you, but know that your time is not up. And you will suffer much more if you are to find and save your son. The body and any body you inhabit is but a vessel for the transference of pain. You and I and all of my followers must endure that pain. Forgive those who repent earnestly and look to relieve the suffering of others if you are to relieve any coming cruelty that might befall your son. And uh, do you say anything? fuck this shit and I try to use a stillness of mind and see if I can shatter the illusion or whatever's going on just to see if it works I don't know if it will and what does stillness of mind do uh, <clears throat> rule is written is it's you can use an action to end one effect of, on yourself that's causing you to be charmed or frightened yeah doesn't work oh, my. Fuck, what the shit who, who are you what I was on a train Paint is so you said your followers, you you and your followers, who are you? Some call me Il Mater, some call me Il Larter. Many call me the crying god, the Lord on the Rack, the Enduring Run one. Uh and, 
and you I'm sorry there's a lot you you know where my son is I do not there's fog clouding it but I am the one who granted you some of your power and strength recently I just think for a second and I bring up my shield of faith goes up and, uh, and it says you mean this thing yep um, uh, I, I don't know what to say exactly. Do you, do you know if he's alive? I thought I might have dropped a mountain on his head. I, uh, he is alive. All right, well, I got that going for me, and I'm still, like, standing back from this creepy dude. Yeah, I mean, you're not, <laughs> not you're not, not scared. Up. You're not scared at all. Okay. okay. Like, you... This whole thing you're very you're just not you're the opposite of scared you're very okay you're not necessarily comforted but you're just um you feel secure mm -hmm. and not scared okay. and so i am just saying uh where are we right now this is just a a waiting room uh, but I am assured it is not your time and uh, I will be with you in your new journey and uh, as he says that he kind of turns into light and it diffuses and your vision diffuses and we will switch back to the car uh, and Prodi, you hear the banging that you heard, and it gets louder and louder, and Herc f finally hear like a bang, and I assume you and Ashwin walk outside to hear the noise. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go. That sounds really weird. Where's Crispy? And people are looking out of their rooms, and you head out, and you see Herc is... Uh, the door is splintered, and... Um, he is, you, as you walk out of your suite, you see him enter the bathroom and he calls out for Dr. Madeline. Dr. Madeline, quick, we need you. And Dr. Madeline uh, comes and she enters. And as you guys are rounding, uh, getting closer to the bathroom and you look in, you see Crispy on the floor, no blood whatsoever. Uh, Pants around my ankles, presumably. Pants around his ankles. Uh, Herc uh, had grabbed a hand towel and tried to uh, cover you. And uh, Modesty. Modesty. And uh, he's looking in the toilet, and he is freaked out. You see him going, oh, my God. And uh, Dr. Madeline is checking him for vitals. And she says, I, I think he's, I think he's dead. And, um, Herc is looking in the toilet and he grabs another hand towel and, uh, looks in and casts something. And after he does that, he looks around and then seems a little more relieved and he picks up the shrunken orc's head and uh, is holding it with a towel and uh, says, I think someone placed a something, a, a high level bobble trink. Uh, I can't imagine what it casts, some sort of trap they used it for, uh, but there is diamond dust sprinkled around where it was laying in the toilet. Uh, and Madeline looks in and uh, says, Diamond dust, diamond dust. Uh, and she says, That's used for abjuration spells. Uh, of course, we don't know what sort of power this bobble had. Uh, 
I don't know what's going on, Herc. What? And people are mumbling. And what are you and Ashwin doing, Karate? Uh, we run over to to uh, Crispy, and we're just like, like, no, he can't be dead. And Prady Prady uh, tries to use his uh, healing light on him, and so he does like his usual uh, healing light for eleven healing. Um, just like, come on, you can't be dead. This is crazy. You are sure. Wake that, up. Are you? You are sure that you sent it? You you every it worked. But mm -hmm. it just, it's like using it on a, uh inanimate object. Uh, he's, you're sure when you do that, that he's stone cold dead. Uh, and Dr. Madeline and Herc say that they're extremely sorry. And uh, uh, when they see you do that to him, his body, they say, uh, you're a magic user. Do you know what spells diamond dust might be used for? No. Are you proficient in arcana? Yeah. Yeah, make a roll. Okay. Thirteen. Um yeah, it's actually a pretty low level spell you've heard about, uh, maybe through your book of shadows or whatnot, but um mm -hmm. It's a non-detection type of spell uh, that was used around the toilet uh, diamond dust is used for. And um, uh, at that point, Miss um, Emerald is pretty upset and talking to Mary Quint. And uh, Mary Quint is saying something rude to her. And Miss Emerald walks up and says... I can't, just go get, go get, go get Ack, was that his name? Hierophant Ack? Uh, and Herc says, yeah, okay, we can do that. And uh, General Ratchet walks up and says, I'll go summon him. And a uh, minute later, this tiny pygmy owl, uh, comes in from the top of the car like it had a place on top of the car and uh, is dressed in uh, a plant-based attire and uh, enters the car and says, looks very uh, um, disappointed and... Uh, it's a cute as fuck owl. Just very. It's a pygmy owl, Aarakocra, and uh, they say, Hierophant, we need you to do your thing. This was unplanned, but that's what you're here for. Uh, you did it for... By the way, where is Arbiter? And uh, Hierophant says, uh, I just finished... I just finished with him... Uh, Obviously, it looks a little different, uh, but I guess I can help out here. Uh, but you're you're uh, you're gonna need. You know what? I'll do it. And the tiny little uh, owl, Eric Cockra, comes up to to Ashwin and Prady, and very softly and gently introduces himself as uh, I'm Hierophant Ack of Eldath. And make a religion check, Prodi. Thirteen. Yeah, it's uh, not a hard check. Eldath is another is a nature god, known as the Green Goddess, uh, mother guardian of groves, uh, a, a general good god, um, and Hierophant Ack hops over to Crispy's body and uh, says to you guys, I can bring him back. Uh, what they got- Do it. What they got going on here is, uh, and he 
anyways, uh, but I will need to perform this ritual that they have me doing on everyone else. And uh, everyone? Not everyone. Uh, it's just, and at that point, Herc and Dr. Uh, Madeline kind of go, uh, 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 and uh, Hierophant gets quiet and pulls out some uh, some oils and various smelly unguents and starts rubbing it on his hands and arms and face in a ritualistic manner and uh, starts performing a ritual and um, it takes about an hour and asks for you to leave so uh, he has more room and uh, as he's performing it um, every once in a while rubbing oils on on himself now uh, crispy roll a d100 40. Okay. Um, uh, as uh, you see him performing this ritual, Prati, you see his body, his human body, kind of form into a, a mist. And first it's like his skin is giving off mist and then his skin becomes mist and it starts getting thicker and thicker around him as the ritual continues and uh shortly thereafter uh you can't really see what's going on and uh cutting back to you crispy you saw this god who was talking to you disappear in uh, a very bright light and bright light encompassed your vision and uh it starts to subside and you look up and you're in the bathroom like you must have passed out and just had a dream mm -hmm. maybe someone left a real stinker in the toilet but you're pretty sure you saw a shrunken head uh maybe it's the weird food you just ate uh, you're kind of annoyed now about the cook. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you're on the ground looking up at this tiny pygmy owl next to you. Brown owl. Barn owl. As cute as Ashwin. In my notes, I have cute as fuck. Like, very cute. Um, and uh, smiling and, you know, uh, that's the first thing you see. And you see... Uh, as you look around, uh, you look to your left and you see Prady and Ashwin look fucking worried. And now, Prady, you see this green creature, which you know what it is. But you think you just saw Crispy's body turn to fog and a goblin reappear out of the fog. Crispy? And yeah, you hear him. <clears throat> you know who it is. You know that voice. There's a tad of owl next to me. And my, my britches are around my ankles. Can someone please explain what is... Your britches are, are you were... much bigger now. All of your clothes are huge. You were dead and now you're like this little goblin. A head in the toilet killed me? This this I'm a, guy wait, what? I'm a what? This guy named this little uh this <laughs> this little pygmy owl named Hierophant Aff. I'm Hierophant Ack. Ack, sorry. He I, uh I, I... He did a spell on you to bring you back, but you're a you're a we didn't know you were gonna be turned into a uh little goblin. But thank oh. god you're alive. And I stand up and I'm probably like what half as tall as i was before because i was like six two or something yeah well uh, we can uh, uh you can choose whatever height and weight you want and stuff like that sure sure but 
relatively. Yes, the goblins definitely. are smaller. <laughs> so I stand up and my head like barely clears the counter in the bathroom. <laughs> what? I I don't feel very good. You feel I quite don't... you feel quite light. Like you feel mobile. Right. Right. I guess it makes sense. But I don't feel very good still. <laughs> no. Mentally, no. How to, um you, did you just talk? Is there another cute thing that's talking at me? Yeah, Ashwin, can you... I, can you, you died. Uh... Uh, sorry to say this. Uh, you died, and I performed a ritual on you to bring no, you back the to life. Guy, the creepy guy said I did not die. He was very clear on that front. He, he said it was not my time, and I did not die. I don't know yeah, what it's, it's... a person said to you, but... The creepy smiling guy, covered in blood. No, no one else saw him. That was just me. No, I. Oh. But the goddess Eldath saw fit to bring you back. Okay, I'm just racking up uh, favors that I owe to gods, apparently. Oh, she said to me that she was doing a favor to for another uh, god's follower. Oh, well, maybe I'm still just beholden to one then lucky day um my hands are green and i just start like trying to wash them <laughs> <laughs> yep you scrub and scrub it's gotta it's gotta come off right it does ashwin right? ashwin you might have some competition for the cutest ashwin says i am freaked the fuck out me what too this happening? train is insane have you, I've never heard of a bobble or any trinket being that powerful. Who puts a shrunken head in the toilet? What's wrong with people? <laughs> and Herc says to you, well, someone is playing a game and uh, perhaps... And he looks around at everyone and says, perhaps have taken it too far... But I'm not one to say. I'm just a fucking actor, so what the fuck. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to bed. And he leaves and goes to his suite and slams the door. And everyone else is acting like, oh my god, thank you, Hierophant Ack. And Ack is just ignoring him other than like Prodi or Ashwin. But just walks out and goes back to the top of the, uh, the car uh, where... He came in, and, uh, yeah. Thank God you're alive. We thought we'd lost you forever. I tried to heal you, and nothing was... Uh, I'm not fully convinced about my liveliness at the moment. I'm gonna go get a drink, I think. And, hey, uh... I start try to get drunk faster the, now. To the lounge. Yeah, you go to the lounge with your... You don't need pants because the shirt's so big on you that it, it's like a nightgown now. Yep. And and you walk to the to the bar and the I clock do get my my whip off of my pants and it's just like trailing behind me. Yeah, the yeah, bar yeah. Because I'm so close to the ground. Yep. <laughs> That's actually a pretty <laughs> cute uh, vision. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you go to the clockwork bartender and ask for a drink and you are served. As many as you like, as the general and uh, and uh, Dr. Madeline um, come in and tell the golem to put it on their tab. So, uh, um, yeah. I just, I just got to try one thing and make sure it still works. And I slam my, my bourbon that I ordered and I throw the cup across the room and try to whip it. Yeah. And crack my whip and break the glass to make sure I can still use my whip. <laughs> make an uh, attack roll. The same modifiers. Goblin, goblin form. Yeah, same modifiers. Cool. Well, not super great. Uh, 14. Yep, sure enough, you feel like you're just as skilled. It does feel a little different because your hands are, your fingers are a little uh, more slender and thin than mm. your human fingers were. Not as obviously not as uh, burly, but they seem to be well practiced. Okay. Uh, cool. And uh, as you do that, a dwarf comes in, wearing 
the oversized armor of Arbiter, uh, Arbiter Christie, and he comes in and says, "You too, huh?" And we look eye to eye because we're both the same height now. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, me too. That's well. where we'll leave it. <laughs> well, she. Well, she. <laughs> she. Crispy's a crispy goblin now. <laughs> Next week, all the uh, all the characters will be named after the wire characters. We'll <laughs> be like Stranger Beal. <laughs> cool, thanks, guys. Surprised uh, we didn't run into a share share loke Hollands. Oh no, I was sticking to uh, Agatha Christie. <laughs> I, I was thinking sticking to Agatha Christ Christie and uh, the mm -hmm. hit. Movie from 1985, Clue. Uh, but yeah, um, thanks. Oh yes, I noticed. Guys, uh, anything you'd like to plug, Dave? No, I just would like to share with everybody that I stacked all my dice. They're all stacked on top of each other. Ooh. Good job, good job. Yeah, well done. I didn't know it was possible, but I, I did it. <laughs> yeah, nothing to plug. Excellent, Brian. Oh, I got nothing to plug. Just playing D&D, like I do. Okay, and I'm Jake Friday. You can find me on Twitter, at Jake Friday, on Instagram, at Jake of the Friday. I started playing the game Observation and tried to stream it, but my stream was some kind of fucked on my personal Twitch uh, channel. So I will get that fixed, or I will. I recorded it, so I will continue to record it and probably upload it somewhere. But that game is fucked. Uh, anyways, join us next week. Uh, Sunday at 4 p.m. As Dave rolls yep. more dice for, for something, and he knocks down his tower. Yeah. Uh, join us next week, 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and until then, be excellent to others and be excellent to yourself. Bye. Bye. Peace. Cool. <laughs>